God will vindicate you. Many times as believers, we try to prove our innocence in the face of falsity, misinformation, and disinformation. This is okay if we can prove our innocence or prove wrong those who try to malign or misrepresent us. But what about situations where we cannot effectively defend ourselves or where those accusing us are doing so deliberately to malign us? What option do we have and what does the Bible say we should do? Well, the position of the scriptures as regard where we are falsely accused and what we needed to do is clear. God promises vindication if we can follow his instructions and directives. The scriptures, position, and directives are contained and clearly spelled out in the Bible. Matthew chapter 5, verse 37, for example, the Bible says, But let your yes be yes, and your no, no, for whatever is more than this is from the evil one. Matthew chapter 10, verse 19 to 20, But when they deliver you up, do not worry about how, or what you should speak, for it will be given to you in that hour what you should speak. For it is not you who speak, but the spirit of your father who speaks in you. Leviticus chapter 19 verse 12 And you shall not swear by my name falsely, nor shall you profane the name of your God. I am the Lord. It is evident that God does not want us, his children, to be despising much energy trying to prove our innocence or to justify ourselves. Instead, he wants us to be straightforward and simple in our response and allow him to vindicate us. So for you who have been falsely accused or that are suffering for what you did not know or do, the Lord promises you respite. So be calm and wait upon the Lord in good attitude and state of the mind for your vindication is coming soon. Even if it seems delayed, wait for it. In Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 3, the Bible says, for the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it will speak, and it will not lie. Though it tarries, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. Words of God are prophetic, and as you receive it and run with it, meditate and ruminate on it, being careful to live according to its prescription, it becomes a vision. And as your vision, God says that he has set time for its fulfillment, and that it won't delay. So you only need to be in good state of the mind, and at the time appointed, God will vindicate you. Be rest assured that God will not fail you, no he won't. He will definitely vindicate you at his appointed time. But why does it seem like God delays in the vindication of his people? The scriptures answer this in the book of 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 9. The Lord isn't really being slow about his promise, as some people think. No. He is being patient for your sake. He does not want anyone to be destroyed, but wants everyone to repent. Ezekiel chapter 33 verse 11 Say to them, As surely as I live, declares the Sovereign Lord, I take no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but rather that they turn from their ways and live. Turn. Turn from your evil ways. Why will you die, people of Israel? God has no pleasure in the suffering of the innocent and neither does he has pleasure in the death of the wicked. He says in Ecclesiastes chapter 8 from verses 11 to 13. Because the sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily, therefore the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. Though a sinner does evil a hundred times, and his days are prolonged, yet I surely know that it will be well with those who fear God, who fear before him. But it will not be well with the wicked, nor will he prolong his days, which are as a shadow, because he does not fear before God. God may delay the execution of his judgment on our accusers or the unjust, just to offer the grace privilege, and the opportunity to change. But that doesn't mean that his grace and mercy last for eternity. If the unjust do not change, and God's grace given time elapses then judgment, according to God's justice, becomes inevitable. So God's seeming delays of your vindication is never denial or abandonment, Instead, it should be seen as, that he is giving your accusers the grace and opportunity to repent because God has no pleasure in the death of the sinners. So if your vindication seems delayed, what God is saying is, wait for it. Wait for it, for it will surely come to pass. And it will not tarry. Isaiah 3 verse 10 says, Say to the righteous that it shall be well with them. 
for they shall eat the fruit of their doings. That is your assurance, you child of God. No matter what may, you shall not end it in shame. Everything shall turn out for your good. Romans 8 verse 28 also says, And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are the called according to His purpose. That is God's sure promise for you, child of God. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 24 verse 35, Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. So your promised vindication is sure and certain. Certainly, it shall be well with you. Someone may ask, Is it only in the dimension of accusations, that God promises us vindication? Of course not only in that. God also promises us His vindication, in terms of confirmation of our words and His words in our mouths. As we teach, preach, or declare it. In the book of 1 Kings chapter 22 from verses 28 to 29 down to 39, we saw how God vindicated Prophet Micaiah. He could have been tagged as a fake or false prophet and could have been executed. But God vindicated him in the end. 1 Kings chapter 22 verse 28 to 29. And Micaiah said, If thou return at all in peace, the Lord hath not spoken by me. And he said, Hearken, O people, every one of you. So the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat the king of Judah went up to Ramathalid. Verses 34 to 35. Now a certain man drew a bow at random, and struck the king of Israel between the joints of his armor. So he said to the driver of his chariot, Turn around and take me out of the battle, for I am wounded. The battle increased that day, and the king was propped up in his chariot, facing the Syrians, and died at evening. The blood ran out from the wound onto the floor of the chariot. Verse 37 So the king died, and was brought to Samaria. And they buried the king in Samaria. God also vindicated Elijah from being considered not to be truly a man of God. 2 Kings chapter 1 verse 9 to 10 Then the king sent to him a captain of fifty with his fifty men. So he went up to him, and there he was, sitting on the top of a hill. And he spoke to him, Man of God, the king has said, Come down. So Elijah answered and said to the captain of fifty, If I am a man of God, then let fire come down from heaven and consume you and your fifty men. And fire came down from heaven and consumed him and his fifty. God also vindicated Elisha. 2 Kings chapter 7 verses 1 to 2. Then Elisha said, Hear ye the word of the Lord, thus saith the Lord, Tomorrow about this time shall a measure of fine flour be sold for a shekel, and two measures of barley for a shekel, in the gate of Samaria. Then a lord on whose hand the king leaned answered the man of God, and said, Behold, if the Lord would make windows in heaven, might this thing be? And he said, Behold, thou shalt see it with thine eyes, but shalt not eat thereof. Verses 19 to 20. And that lord answered the man of God, and said, Now, Behold, if the Lord should make windows in heaven, might such a thing be? And he said, Behold, thou shalt see it with thine eyes, but shalt not eat thereof. And so it fell out unto him, for the people trod upon him in the gate, and he died. What about our Lord Jesus Christ, whom God vindicated, when he was physically here on earth with us? For instance, in the account of our Lord Jesus Christ and Martha where life was instantly confirmed in the tomb of Lazarus. John chapter 11 from verses 20 down to 45. Till today God is still in the business of vindicating his people. For instance, we have seen and witnessed a lot of miracles, signs, and wonders in confirmation of his word. Mark chapter 16 verse 20. And they went forth, and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them, and confirming the word with signs following. Amen. Now let us pray. Everlasting Father, King of Glory, thank you, dear Lord, for your wonderful promises. Indeed, they are our solace, our comfort, and our strength that have kept us going. Please, dear Heavenly Father, be quick to vindicate your children. Prove our enemies and accusers wrong on their evil conceptions and misgivings about us. Destroy their doubts and misgivings and misfeelings about the genuineness of our Christianity 
Lord, through miracles, signs and wonders, and your blessings upon our life, prove to them that we are your true and genuine servants. Close the mouth of our mockers by supplying us with all those things that we have been praying and asking of you. Dear Lord, you say that for our shame that you will give us double. Dear Lord, give us double anointing, double promotion, double fruit of the womb, double wealth and prosperity, double grace of strength and energy to serve you, O Lord. Clear every doubt about the genuineness of our fellowship with you, just as you did to Moses, Elijah, Elisha, Micaiah, and host of other saints of the past and even today. All this I ask, dear Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, my Lord. Amen. We appreciate you immensely for joining us today. Here is another video titled Warfare Prayers Against the Devil. Carefully handpick for you to watch next. Also, if you are new here, consider subscribing for we publish videos every week just like this. God bless you. Amen.